Hello and welcome to Virtual Sunday School here at Hampton First Baptist Church. I'm so glad you could join our class today. My name is Gerald Starling and today is Sunday, May 9th. And yes, it's Mother's Day. What a blessing God has given us in our mothers. I hope that you have time to get with your mother, talk with your mother or whatever, and celebrate her life with her on this special day. As we start our class today, let's begin with an opening word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come thankful for your blessings. And Father, for our mothers, they're so precious. And Father, we'd ask that you would be with each and every mother today. Father, that you would reach your arms around them and give them a special hug, Father, for all that they have done through the years for us. And Father, we'd ask that you would be with us as we continue our study in the book of 1 John. Father, that you would open our minds and our hearts to your word today. And Father, for the many that are ill and recovering from various ailments, Father, we'd ask that you would be with those and their families today as they recover. And Father, we'd ask that you would heal if it's in your precious will each and every one in our church family. Father, we ask that for your supreme guidance in our lesson today and all these things we ask in Christ's name and for his very precious sake. Amen. In our class of uh, virtual Sunday school class, we are studying the book of First John. The book of 1 John is about our daily walk with God. And we as true believers need to be clear what the Word of God says about our daily walk with God. Today is lesson nine in our book of 1 John, How Time is Flying By. But before we jump into... Uh, our lesson today, I'd like to do a quick review from lesson eight of last week. As we know, we start each class with a question. And the question last week was, does the gospel abide in you? And we looked at that word abide and looked at it as far as its meaning. It means to remain to dwell. Folks, does the gospel dwell in your life? And we looked at four verses in the book of 1 John. We looked in chapter 2, verse 24, 25, 26, and 27. In verse 24, the apostle John asks or infers the question, does the gospel abide in you? And then in verse 25, he states the promise that if the gospel does abide in us, that God promises us eternal life. And then in verse 26, the Apostle John brings out the fact that there are people that are trying to deceive or seduce us away from Jesus Christ, away from the truth. And we have to be careful. But then in verse 27, the Apostle John gives us the provision of protection that God has provided to us as true believers. It's the Holy Spirit. Folks, if we have been born again, been regenerated, then God has given us special protection with the Holy Spirit. It's very important for us to understand the importance of the gospel abiding in us. Now, let's move on to lesson nine. And our question is a little different. The Apostle John takes a little bit different approach now and wants to know, do you abide in Christ? Do you abide in Christ? 
The word abide has the same meaning to dwell, to remain, to continue. And are you remaining and continuing in Christ? Today, I only want to look at one verse. It's chapter 2, verse 28 in the book of 1 John. Sometimes we as true believers read our Bible but we don't meditate on what God is saying and we don't draw all the truth from a particular passage. And I want to take a look at this one verse because it is jam-packed with information for us as believers if we will take time, look at it, and meditate on what the Apostle John is trying to say. Verse 28, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Again, we see John come across as that caring, loving shepherd here, as he speaks to the little children. And here he's talking about the believers in the church. He's not talking about new converts. He's talking about believers in the church. And he says, Now little children, abide in him. He's talking about abiding in Jesus Christ. The basic idea of abiding in Christ is that of dwelling. It's just like dwelling in a house. We are to dwell in Christ. It's a kind of life he showed us how to live when he walked here on earth. He lived a righteous life, a life that was always right, toward God and man. Therefore, we are to take our home in Christ, to dwell and move about in the righteous life of Jesus Christ. We are to be right with God and with man, just as Jesus was when he walked the earth. When a person abides in Christ, then you may say, well, what kind of life does that person live? How how do you live if you abide in Christ? And if you get down practically, you know, what things would a person do that abides in Christ? How does a person behave toward God and also toward man? How do you do that? Well, let's take some time and look at Scripture and see what Scripture tells us about the life we should live if we abide in Christ. First, and I think foremost, is that if we abide in Christ, it means that we confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came to this earth lived approximately 33 years, did many miracles in the name of God, and he bore our sins on Calvary, rose on the third day, and sit at the right hand of God the Father. I think another thing is that a person that abides in Christ walks and is in fellowship with Christ. That means that they walk in the light. You walk in the light. Don't walk in darkness. Abiding in Christ means that a person walks in open confession before God. He walks hour by hour, all day, every day, opening their life to God. Is that how you spend your day? Abiding in Christ means that a person continues in the word of Christ and knows the truth. 
Folks, having the truth on your side is so important. As we have mentioned in our study, John was battling the Gnostics of his day that were denying that Jesus was the Son of God and were claiming false claims that Jesus was not the Son of God, that he did not actually die on the cross, and that he did not resurrect. And so the truth is important here to John's reader. And I think it's just as important for us today to understand the truth about who Jesus Christ is and what he expects of us each and every day. Abiding in Christ means that a person lets the word of God abide in his or her life. Again, we see that word abide again, meaning letting the word of God abide or dwell in your life. Is that what's in your life? Abiding in Christ means that a person has the power to live like he or she should. Folks, we have power over sin if we are a true born-again believer. Folks, we have the Holy Spirit, and all we have to do is pray and know the truth And folks, we can live like we should live. We have power over temptation. Abiding in Christ means that a person dwells in love, unity, and fellowship with all other believers. Folks, are you living in love, unity, and fellowship with other believers? In this day and age that we live in, we need to be in unity with other believers. Abiding in Christ means that a person bears fruit and lives a very fruitful life. We're talking about fruit. We're talking about Galatians chapter 5 the fruits of the Spirit. Folks, we should have the fruits of the Spirit in our life if Christ is truly abiding in our life. Abiding in Christ means that a person loves others and that he walks and loves, walks, he lives and walks in love toward others. The word others here. It's talking about people that we come in contact, possibly non-believers, strangers, people that we may encounter at the grocery store or wherever we may be out and accidentally run into someone. Folks, we need to have love toward everyone because if you look around in our state and nation, we need love toward one another. And we need to show that love and not be prejudiced toward one person or another. Abiding in Christ means that a person continues in the church. He or she has not gone out from the church. Folks, I think true believers want to be in church. They want to have fellowship with other believers. I have encountered people that say they don't need church, but you question their salvation. Oh, yes, I'm saved and all this. But folks, if they're not in church, I have to question based on several scriptures, are they really saved? And what is their true relationship with Jesus Christ? Folks, believers want to be with other believers. And the scriptures command us to not 
stop fellowshipping and even fellowship more as the end times are approaching. Abiding in Christ means a person does not walk in continuous sin. Folks, we have power over sin and a true believer will not get hung up in a continuous sin over and over. Abiding in Christ means a person possesses confidence because of the Holy Spirit that is abiding in them. Folks, you can walk around, and I'm not saying a proud, haughty spirit, but with confidence because the Holy Spirit is in you. And when you speak to someone and God opens the door of witnessing to that person, you have confidence that you can speak to them, Father, I mean, and give them the information they need. What they need to know about God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So folks, I think you can have a Holy Spirit confidence when you go out if you're abiding in Christ. Abiding in Christ means a person act actively surrenders himself to God's commandments. Folks, you should surrender yourself to God's commandments willingly. Just like the Apostle John has done, he has been submitting himself willingly to God's commands. And John has had not had an easy life. He's been beaten. He's been put in prison. He was thrown out on the Isle of Patmos with the scorpions. So, so John understands what it's like to live the kind of life that he has lived and to follow God's commandments. A great book about surrender is a book by Andrew Murray. It's called Absolute Surrender. A great book. I would encourage everyone to read it. It's a great book about how to really surrender your life to God. It's uh, several years old, but I think it is as timely in May of 2021 as it was the day that Andrew Murray, Andrew Murray wrote the book. So I highly encourage that. I believe that if a person is truly, truly born of God, that he or she cannot help but reflect the character of God. I'm serious. I think if you are truly born again, that you will reflect the character of God in your life. If you stay in the Word, and abide in Christ, you will reflect God's character. In verse 28, it says, And now, little children, abide in Him. And then in the second part of the verse, it says that when He appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before Him at His coming. John gives us the purpose for abiding in Jesus Christ that you may have confidence and not be ashamed. Folks, that's the reason we need to abide in Jesus. Folks, that we'll have confidence when he comes and we will not be ashamed. Now, if we look at the word confidence here, it means bonus, assurance. It has the idea of an unshakable bonus and assurance. And folks, that's what we need today. We need bonus and assurance because of all the trials and tribulations that we're going through. 
If we abide in Christ now, today, and every day, we can have unshakable confidence, confidence and assurance and even have boldness when Jesus Christ returns to this earth. Folks, I want to stand there with confidence, boldness when Jesus comes and have him say, Thou good and faithful servant. The word ashamed here has the idea of to shrink back, to pull away from, to sense guilt and sense disgrace, to feel embarrassment. Folks, I don't want to be embarrassed when Jesus comes. If we do not abide in Christ, we will be ashamed when Jesus Christ returns to this earth. Folks, do you have the confidence that you need if Jesus returns to earth today? Do you have that confidence that you could stand there in his presence? Or would you have to stand there in shame Shrinking back. It's a real question we need to have answered. Folks, I want to look at the last part. It says twice in verse 28, he says that when he appears and at his coming. Folks, Jesus Christ is coming again. Scripture is emphatic about the return of Jesus Christ to this earth. It's going to happen. He's coming to consummate human history and to judge the earth. He's going to judge every man and every woman who has ever lived. Father, folks, the Father is going to say it's time and Jesus is coming Folks, we need to be ready. It's happening. The second point is the task of the believers is to prepare for the return of Jesus Christ. Folks, we need to be preparing. We need to be living right. We need to be living in Christ. We need to have the gospel in our life. And folks, we need to be telling others about Jesus Christ. Folks, we need to be an encouragement for all the people that are discouraged. Folks, we're going through a tremendous pandemic for almost two years now. And it, it, I mean, there's good days and bad days and bad reports. I was just looking <clears throat> while I was in North Carolina, 79 people died in North Carolina because of COVID-19 last week. Folks, the numbers haven't gone away. So we need to be prepared. Folks, we need to watch the news, but folks, we need to be an encouragement for everyone that's discouraged and let them share in the hope we have. We as believers will have confidence and not be ashamed when we stand at his coming. Folks, that's so important. Folks, when Jesus comes, there will be joy and rejoicing for some true believers. Folks, there's going to be happiness. But for those who have not been abiding in Christ, there will be shame, Guilt, disgrace, embarrassment, probably a shrinking back or pulling back for those who have been walking unfaithfully. Folks, those that did not have the gospel. Folks, the ones that did not abide in Christ. Do you have confidence in your relationship with Jesus Christ. I hope 
that you do. And I hope you will make that a matter of priority if you do not. Folks, our memory verse this week is our scripture verse. I think it has so much information and should have a huge impact on our life. First John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Folks, Jesus Christ is coming back. Scripture is emphatic. Are you ready? I hope that you are. I have really enjoyed our time together. Again, happy Mother's Day to all our mothers all over the world. You're such a precious gift from God, and I hope God will bless you for all that you have done through the years for your children. May God enrich your walk this week through the light of his word, and I look forward to our time together next week. Thank you, and may God bless each one of you.